If you do something wrong, should you be defined by it forever? Well, what if you are a sex offender? Washington State Democrats propose replacing the term sex offender to avoid being defined as a sex offender forever. Let's talk about it on Azimuth Podcast. I'm Kimberly McNabb. And I'm Barrett McNabb. So we're renaming everything in the United States. I mean, we're mm-hmm. renaming military installations because it could be uh, offend people. We're renaming uh, streets. We're renaming buildings. I mean, it, it is just a this renaming marathon that is going on. Mm-hmm. And so heaven forbid that we offend sex offenders um, and not hold them uh, accountable and responsible for their actions. I mean, they have to be on our registry for life, right? Mm-hmm. So why do we need to worry about their feelings and, uh, and, and rename what it is that they have done? We call well, murderers, murderers, right? Well, We're not oh, renaming they'll be that. next. But it seems like we're just fast forwarding this degradation of language. We refer to welfare and public assistance as entitlements. And now racism is no longer referring to bias based on the color of skin, but bias based on political orientation as well. And, you know, heaven forbid Justice Amy Coney Barrett used the words sexual preference instead of sexual orientation. And that kind of got the LGBTQ community all fired up. Yeah. All of this is just a hoax to protect feelings. Sorry, if you're a rapist, I don't give a damn about your feelings. You're a sex offender. You're a rapist. Yeah. I mean, this is absolutely just incredible. I mean, talking about needing to, to draw the line at sex offender, the words needed to maintain the severity of their crime. I mean, if yep. you think about it, uh, as a criminal justice major, um, rapist and sexual offenders are very low in the pecking order inside a prison system. Um, the lowest of the low are uh, child uh, sex offenders. Um, they're, they're the lowest of the low, and often um, they have a target on their back and be, um, will be and, killed. And that's why I really detest, I, I get disgusted when people call them minor attracted persons. Like, no, they're yeah. pervert. They're pervert. Yep. And they d- they need to stay on that bottom row of the pecking scale. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I completely agree. And and so by, by trying to give them a, a morality promotion, uh when when they exit the uh the prison system i think is it just does a disservice uh to um you know the the community and the society and to mm-hmm. america when you look at a at a at a court case a criminal court case a lot of people get confused about this that it's uh that you're prosecuting a, a person that commits a crime doesn't matter what crime it is um in order to get justice for the victim okay mm-hmm. I would say that is that is what prosecutors say, but that's not what is happening because the court case is not Jane Doe versus sex offender person. It's the United States of America versus the sex offender person. It's the state of Washington versus the sex offender person. It is society uh, who is getting justice. It's right. not... Uh, not the victim. Now, the victim's also getting justice, but still, it is an offense against society, and that's what these people are being uh, convicted of. That's why you you see the government versus the person uh, in this particular instance. And um, by uh, belittling and uh, reducing the, the seriousness of their crimes, I think, really does a disservice to society. Exactly. Now, what what's worse is that they want to add sex offenders to the board, the sex offender board, claiming that sex offenders' lived experiences are are valuable. I mean, what what are the chances they're going to come down harsh in making policies if if they've done it themselves? Yeah, this is this is not one of those those things where. Um, you can make a, a, a cool television show or a movie about such as, you know, the Catch Me If You Can, um, where the person was a, uh, did bank fraud and check fraud and then pretended to be a medical doctor, pretended to be an attorney, pretended to be an airline pilot. Um, those are <clears throat> a desire to, to receive monetary things and he's kind of doing it for fun. Now, what the FBI, when they finally caught him, 
turned him into how to catch other criminals, how to catch other criminals that were doing bank fraud and check fraud and things like that. Um, but the sex offender, there's something wrong with them. It's yeah. not a there's not a satisfaction um, that they're going to get from catching other sex offenders. They're they're going to fantasize about. Yes. Be, doing the, the crime um, because there's something when you're a sex offender, there's somebody something wrong with you. Um, it truly is. It's a deviant behavior. Uh, it's a personal behavior that you're doing. It's a personal crime. And um, I, I don't think they're comparable uh, to, to add these people to the board in order to get their point of view. Yeah. And, um, and it's not just like level one sex offenders that are, you know, less likely to repeat the crime. It's not quote um uh, it's disgusting as a, of a crime is like a level three the level three is like a repeat offender someone who used a weapon um you know someone who may groom a, a child um, yeah it, i mean it, so, so, so it, it includes that level as well that's yeah. allowed to be that they want to put on the board and um you know they also want to have them sitting next to someone who's a victim. They want to have victims on the board. Can you imagine? Yeah. I mean, let's let's go back to level one. I mean, you're talking about voyeurism. You're talking about, um, you know, unwanted touching and, and, and things like that. To all the way to level three, you're talking about brutal rape with a weapon. All right. Um, and, and so they want level three people that committed the worst of crimes against mm-hmm. society, some of the worst of crimes against society. And they want them to sit next to victims um, and then say, look, you know, here's here's my point of view uh, on on what we should be doing uh, to, to help to help people. I mean, there there are organizations that are out there that are nonprofits that are trying to decriminalize and or normalize adult men uh, having sexual relations with uh, um, uh you know, young adolescent boys and and toddler boys, um, and, and you know this is this is just a, a continuous normalization uh, of uh, of something that's wrong. It's it's mm-hmm. just absolutely wrong. It's morally wrong. It's wrong against society. Um, it's uh, it's deviant. It's it's uh, obviously against God's law as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but still, I think to re-traumatize a victim by having them sit next to level three rapists. Um, I think that's a bridge too far. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I can't imagine who would sign up for that job. Like what someone who's been a victim of that, why would you think, okay, I'm going to sign up for this. I'm going to, you know, help society and determining what happens to the sex offender. And, and then you sign up and you go and, you're sitting next to someone and you're seeing like their reactions to hearing crimes that someone is, is, has committed. And like you feel disgust and the person sitting next to you is feeling, you know, they have this pleasure and this, you know, sympathy (laughs) towards the offender that they're making policies for. I just can't imagine um, what's going through that person's head? Well, I tell you that the you know uh, both men and women can be uh, sexually assaulted, so um, there's no guarantee that 100 percent of the the people on on the uh, the board that are victims are going to be women, or 100 percent are going to be men. Mm-hmm. Um, but I would have to say that it will be a very brave human being that is a victim of sexual assault that is willing to step forward uh, and have the courage to face. Not necessarily your um, uh, criminal that that uh, your offender, but but somebody that else was an offender. And you know, if there are men and women that that do that, absolutely good on you being brave. I don't think yep. you should have to be um, subject to that. I think you right. should be able to go onto the board and uh, and give your perspective of whether crime should be tough medium uh, light uh, should be should be your victim impact statement that's making policy um, but yeah. I, I'm sad to say that in Washington you may be uh, you know developing that policy with the the sex offender themselves, along, themselves alongside you um, and I'm that just absolutely you know very sad but if uh, if it does go through 
and the uh, the men and women that are brave enough to do it, good on you, and uh, and hopefully you can make good policy in order to to help um, other people not be a victim. Yep. So thank you so much for this. We wanted to, to bring this to you, and um, we just made us a little sad uh, to see this, um, but uh, we think it's an important subject to talk about. So uh, please stay tuned after these messages. So we just wanted to bring this to you um, because it made us a little bit sad, um, but we thought it was an important subject uh, to bring to your attention. So thank you so much for watching Azimuth Podcast. So what do you think about, uh, about all of this? Please leave a comment below and tell us your opinion on whether you think this is a good idea or not. Our, your opinion is absolutely valuable, and uh, we read every single comment, and uh, we just want to make sure that you're part of the conversation. Hi, everyone. Thank you for listening. If you enjoy our show with all the stories we share, we would love your support. And it's as easy as clicking that subscribe or follow button. This will ensure you never miss an episode and keeps us bringing you these important stories. Your support makes a huge difference. Thank you so much for being part of our podcast family. Thanks, and keep tuning in.